everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City flipped the switch on June 16th. During the noon hour, city offices joined a worldwide effort to save energy and raise awareness. Even though many offices have plenty of sunshine during the day, it's still a time for high energy use. The daylight hour raises awareness about using daylight to light offices and to reduce our environmental footprint. Last year, the city saved more than 2,000 kilowatt hours and almost $500 by turning the lights off in 13 buildings. Be sure to check out pics of city employees saving energy on our social media channels using hashtag DaylightKC. One Ruskin Heights neighborhood resident has a lot of reasons to feel very thankful. She received some much needed volunteer help this week from members of the Bethel Family Worship Center as they spread some love and made some much needed repairs to her home. Check out this video about the program along with other news from city departments. Love that neighbor is wonderful. They didn't take no time to come in, clean up, patch up materials, fix up the house, paint. The paint was done in like four days. It was just coming together wonderfully. They replaced my garage door. This is a wonderful experience that I have been here 12 years and hadn't really had no help, but to come out and see that my whole neighborhood is out here and wanting to help bring some life back into my house is just wonderful. I can't get too much help from for painting and for yard work or whatever. He tries, but somebody stole a lawnmower. So now that I got people helping me, this is just like an overwhelming that I can't. It's just moving so fast. Like I don't really have words, <laughs> but it's it's like beautiful to actually have somebody to come out and help me do all this. Very big relief. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I don't know how I was gonna get it all done, but it's come faster and easier than I ever thought. This is gonna bring a lot better opportunities for me in here, living in here, you know? Uh, I couldn't ask for no, no, nothing better. This is the best thing that ever happened to me all year. Like I said, I had a few trials and tribulations. My mother passed in April. I was building up her room for her to come and stay with me here, but we didn't, unfortunately I didn't get to make it to that, but this is like a breath of fresh air for me right now. Like, I'm so uplifted. Hi, I'm Floyd Peoples, Chief Fire Marshal for the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department. The 4th of July is a time for fun, family, and picnics, but the use and discharge of fireworks in the city limits is prohibited. Kansas City Fire Department responds to numerous fires and injury calls each year due to the use of fireworks. Nationwide, more than 15,000 reported fires were started by fireworks, and 8,000 fireworks-related injuries were treated in U.S. hospital emergency rooms. There are also more fires on the typical 4th of July than any other day of the year. So remember, leave the fireworks to the professionals so you can enjoy your family and picnics and not have a visit from us. Thanks. Have a safe day. Today we are at the Heart of America Golf Academy in Swope Park to talk a little bit about the Alvin Brooks Annual Metro Junior Golf Classic that takes place in a few weeks and is supported by the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. Here to tell us more about the event is James Johnson, the Executive Director of the Kansas City Metro Junior Golf Club. James, thank you for having us here today. Sure, no problem. And give us a little history on the Golf Classic. Can you, how long has it been happening and how did it get started? Well, it's been going on since 2004. 
And it got started because we had kids practicing and training to be golfers, but we didn't have any reward for them, so we decided to have a golf tournament so they can compete. That's something they love to do. But we had trophies for them, prizes for them, and so forth, and they enjoyed it. So that inspired them to become a golfer. And what? how many students attend? So, Because this is for youth. Yes. And what are the ages and, and how many attend? Well, they have to be from 7 to 18 years old. That's age-wise. But we don't have a number on the, 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 amount, the number of kids to attend. But we have, in our tournament from the day one, had more kids come from out of state to participate, probably about 60, sometimes to 70% of mm -hmm. the kids that participated were from out of state because urban kids here in Kansas City and the metro area of Kansas City didn't play golf. Mm. They didn't play golf. But you're changing that with this, oh, yeah. with this tournament, oh, yeah. correct? Well, not only with the tournament, they have to practice and work up to the tournament. They just can't come and just play in the tournament and don't play golf. They have to be a golfer, and that's what we do. We train them to be a golfer, and the reward in the end is you get to play in the golf tournament. And who is your target? Is it mostly urban youth Well, from the city or from other cities? Well, when we started out, our, our focus was the urban kids, but we found out that we got just as many suburban kids come in to play as we did urban kids, and so we just opened it up. It would take a kid from anywhere, Kansas or whatever, didn't make any difference just as long as they were 7 to 18 years old. Now, when it comes to participating in the tournament, most of the kids that participate, like I said, probably about 60, sometime, at one time it was about like 70% of the kids were from out of state. But now we're getting more it's balancing out a little bit, about 50-50 mm -hmm. uh, from interstate of Kansas City and uh, out of state kids. Out of state kids still come here and play. Well, can you give us a rundown of the activities that happened from July 6th, from July 17th through the 19th? Well, on July the 17th, we have this free cookout at Station 7 on Oham Road. And the primary reason we started doing that is because we have kids coming in that town on that Monday, preparing to play for Tuesday and Wednesday. And a lot of the kids haven't eaten anything. And we try to cut down on expenses of them traveling into the city. So we have hot dogs, hamburger, pop, chips, and games and stuff for them to have at the Station 7 on Oham Road for free. We have all of that for them. And, and include the parents and the bus drivers, and they all can eat. So you bring out the welcome wagon when they arrive. Yes, yes. Because they're probably tired and hungry. Yes. And then you get them to play golf on Tuesday, in, on Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday. Right. <laughs> and can you tell us how that's broken out by ages and and by areas of expertise? Too? Well, this is what we do. We have kids that are just learning. Some of them are big kids. Some can be in the uh, eighth grade, and um, but they're just learning, so they don't have a golf game to be on the golf course to be really competitive. So. They get to play five holes of golf, but they win a trophy just as big as anybody else, and they win prizes just like anybody else. Then we have um, kids that are played nine holes on the short par three that can keep up on the golf course, but they can't play 18 holes of golf because their golf skills are not good enough. Then we have kids that have the golf skills that can play 18 holes, nine holes over there, nine holes on this side, and that constitute their 18 holes of golf for that round. Then we have the best golfers play up to Swope Memorial mm -hmm. uh, for two days and they get to play up there for two days. So, so it's, that's where we do it. It's a jam-packed yes. time while they're here. Yes. yes. And I, I, I also understand from just looking at the pictures that are on your website, you have a variety of levels that you just described, but you also have um, young girls that oh, yeah. participate. You have yeah. it, it looks like you have a, a, a nice mixture of urban, suburban, Kansas City, and outside of Kansas City. So that's that's really an accomplishment. Yes, this that's tournament. correct. Like, this year we expecting we expecting a large uh, a large uh, group of Native Americans from Oklahoma, the uh, Cherokee Nation, and also the Choctaw Nation. Is planning on being here, and um, and we're talking probably about maybe forty some kids with the two of those two different uh, groups, Native American groups mm -hmm. there, yeah, and um, and and that's coming in from Oklahoma. So we expect them to be here, you know, for conversation we've had, and their commitment, the verbally commitment that they'll be here. So we'll see what happens. And if people want more information, where would they? 
get to get to that information? Well, they can um, call me from our website page and we have a telephone number on there mm -hmm. listed so they can give me a call and ask any question. And what's your website? Um, KCMJRGC.org. Well, thank you for sharing your website with yeah. us and for having us out here and sharing information about the tournament. Okay, thank you. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area. To learn about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov slash ntdf. Bring out the whole family for the fourth annual Future Stages Festival. It's at the Kauffman Center on Sunday, June 25th, and it's free. This community event shines a spotlight on Kansas City's broad diversity in the arts and will feature more than 700 youth performers on three stages. For more information, visit KauffmanCenter.org. The Public Improvements Advisory Committee, also known as PIAC, invites residents to voice their ideas at a series of citywide and district hearings this June and July. PIAC funds typically are used for flood control, storm drainage, street resurfacing, bridge repairs, traffic signals, tree trimming and planting, and improvements to parks and trails. Now, upcoming public district hearings will be held on Monday, June 12th, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the High V Club Room. That's at 5330 Northwest 64th Street in the Northland. Also Thursday, June 15th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Southeast Community Center located in Swope Park at 4201 East 63rd Street. Also Wednesday, June 21st from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Hillcrest Community Center, 10401 Hillcrest Road. And Thursday, June 22nd from 6 to 8 p.m. downtown at Grace and Holy Trinity Cathedral, located at 415 West 13th Street. As well as Thursday, June 29th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Greg Kleiss Community Center, 1600 John Buck O'Neill Way, which is in the 18th and Vine Jazz District. Residents can also submit requests online at kcmo.gov slash P-I-A-C. You can also request a form by calling 816-513-8828 or email us at piac at kcmo.org. The complete list of summer PIAC hearings is available online on the city's website. Just go to kcmo.gov slash PIAC. The City Hall and the 311 Call Center will be closed on Tuesday, July 4th for the Independence Day holiday. Trash pickup for residents moves to the holiday schedule, which means one day later than usual for residents whose regular trash day is Tuesday through Friday. Monday's trash schedule will not change. July 5th through 10th is also a no tag period for trash collection in the city. That's when residents may set out more than two bags of trash without tags, so you can use the holiday weekend to clean up. 
Also remember that it's illegal to set off fireworks in the city limits, so please enjoy viewing firework displays at one of the many community celebrations. And remember that it's also illegal and a pretty bad idea to shoot off guns in celebration. Those bullets have to come down somewhere. We want everyone to stay safe while enjoying the holiday. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel where you can view all of our great programs on demand. I'm Chris Hernandez. Keep cool out there.